since overheating has been all the rage on the internet. You can probably tell by the level of sweat that I am oozing out of my pores in this, this video that this camera doesn't really overheat. It is hot, it is hot, hot, hot. This thing hasn't overheated shooting in 4K this whole time. And the battery hasn't even really gone down. You can't really see the screen, but you know what? I got more than half the battery left. People just don't give this camera what it deserves. They do not give it its due. Everybody wants to go run out and go buy a $5,000 camera. Go ahead, go ahead. That's your choice. But we're gonna talk about the audio on this camera today and some ways you can make it a little bit better. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first and most obvious test is gonna be the onboard microphones. I gotta say, the ZV-1 has some of the best, if not the best, inbuilt microphones of any small camera I've ever used, really any camera I've ever used for that matter. It's windy right now. It comes with this included little little wind muff that goes on top. That, it's a genius design that fits right into the, uh, the little cold shoe on there. So kudos to you on that, Sony, so we don't have to buy stuff and glue it to the front of our cameras. So I've been using the onboard mics so far into the video. I'm gonna say the same phrase for each mic and then I'll, I'll try and run them back, you know, back to back so you guys can hear them back and forth with each other. So this is the audio test of the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera. I should note that I am just hand holding the camera today. I've got a little wrist strap so I don't drop it. And I am using active steady shot. So it's a little tighter than, uh, than I'd like it, but I'm gonna walk around with it and keep active steady shot on and just hand hold. So I'm trying to keep today's kit as minimal as possible. Just this thing would be in your pocket. This is what you'd get with the onboard mic. I feel like this little camera has kind of gotten lost in the shuffle with all of the stuff that's been released in the last couple months with the Canon R5 and R6 and now the Sony a7S III. Everybody's forgetting about this ZV-1 and this camera is amazing. It's compact, it's got great autofocus, it's got great image quality and great inbuilt audio like this. I just think a lot of people are forgetting about this because all the hype of the other cameras. Oh, how to just handle that exposure change. We're filming in aperture priority now, and now we're going back into the shade. So we'll get a, an opportunity to see how the auto exposure adjusts on this camera. Mostly just adjusting the shutter speed up and down. But I think it does pretty darn good. Also, I'm using a picture profile that I normally don't use. I normally shoot in HLG2. Today here I'm shooting in Cine2 with like a few little tweaks I made. If you're interested, uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested in finding out what this profile is and I'll uh, let you guys know what all the settings are for it, if it even looks good. But it looked pretty neat, we're trying it out. Gotta try something every once in a while. Let's keep on working and let's switch to uh, our second microphone option right now. Okay, the next microphone we're testing is the little Ceramonic mic, the little XM1 I believe it's called. So I had to adjust the audio levels. I keep them around between 20 and 25 when I'm using the onboard mics, but here I knocked them down to between 10 and 12 was the, the sweet spot on these. So you do have to adjust your microphone levels when you switch mics because certain mics are gonna be hotter than other. God damn it, these bugs. I don't, it's just, these bugs are everywhere. What are we talking about now? Yes, the Ceremonic. The Ceremonic, that's it. The Ceremonic XM1. I believe that's what it's called. This is the microphone test with that. So this is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera audio test. One, two, three. With the Ceramonic microphone. Is this better than the onboard mic? It's still a little bit breezy out here. And this is uh, the audio that one can expect with this microphone. Not bad. Not bad at all. What am I saying not bad? I haven't heard it yet. We don't. It might be terrible for all we know. Like, like I'd even know if it's not good. It could be terrible for all we know. What am I saying? Not bad. Stupid. Next microphone we're on now. The old faithful is what I like to call it. This is the Movo VXR10. Kind of a Rode Video Micro knockoff is what I would call this. But in my opinion, this microphone sounds a little better. I, I don't know, for me, I guess that's sort of subjective. What do you like the audio to sound like? but I compared this and the, the Rode Video Micro. This is actually like $20 cheaper. I think this is like 39 and the Rode Video Micro is 59. So 
twenty dollars approximately the difference and i like the sound out of this microphone better a matter of fact if this one was 60 and the road was was only uh 39 or 40 i'd probably still buy this one i just like the uh the audio sound better but you know your mileage may vary this is the audio test for there so here we go this is the sony zv1 vlogging camera audio test of the movo vxr10 microphone it's a little mini shotgun mic the one thing I don't like about this microphone is it increases sort of the overall footprint of the of the package here. It's a little bit bigger. You know, you got this little fluffy mic on top. It looks like a vlogger. I mean, you're a cool vlogger if you have this, but... Okay, so for our final microphone comparison, we're going to use here the Rode Wireless Go system. I should have probably remembered to bring a tripod with me so I could have set this down because the whole benefit of the Rode Wireless Go is the fact that you're not tethered to the camera anymore. Personally, this is my favorite setup. It's very small, real simple and compact. Gives me nice quality audio, and it doesn't add a lot of footprint to the camera, if you will. I feel like the, the shotgun mic on top adds a bit of a, a footprint that I don't want to do. The um, little side mic from Ceramonic, it just, it doesn't really, I suspect, I guess I haven't watched it yet, but or listened to it, but I suspect it's not really any better than the uh, the onboard mics, which are pretty darn good in this. So in my opinion, if you want to up your audio level, this is probably the way to go because I don't get any handling noise from the camera now, like with my hand rustling against it, the little strap I have, the wrist strap, if it bounces against it, I feel like sometimes I'm getting a little bit of handling noise. With this, that's not going to happen. So if you don't want to just use the onboard mics, I feel like the next best thing would be these Rode Wireless Go. And I believe Comica makes some that are pretty similar now, but it's hard to beat Rode. These Rode Wireless Go's, tiny little thing, very simple. I got the Rode Lavalier Go to go with mine. You don't need to use that. You can actually do it with just the, the, the little receiver part. I guess transmitter that part's called. I get them mixed up, but that little, it's covered with a little fuzzy wind muff. It's just kind of big when it clips on your shirt. So, this is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera, audio test, one, two, three, with the Rode Wireless Go. This is probably the setup I would use if I was really trying to go for the highest quality audio and video possible with this camera. I would use this setup, especially if I was somewhere loud, like when I would go to the theme parks or places like that, this would probably be what I would do. Um, if I just wanted to kind of run and gun quickly, I'm using the onboard mics on this. If I'm traveling or doing something like that, those onboard mics are more than adequate. Okay, so let's go through these one more time. This is the onboard mics of the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera audio test. One, two, three. This is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera audio test. One, two, three. With the Ceramonic. This is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera audio test of the Movo VXR10. This is the Sony ZV-1 vlogging camera, audio test, one, two, three, with the Rode Wireless Go. So which of those mics do you think is best? Do you like the onboard mics? I think they're more than adequate, better than any other onboard mics of a camera that I've used in the past. Uh, my second choice, without even listening to them, which I might debunk the whole thing and have to do a the uh, supplement to this video later but i'm telling you as far as for convenience it's going to either be the onboard mic 99 percent of the time and then there's that one percent that i'm going to want to use the uh road wireless go and that's going to be my other mic for this the the movo that goes on top is just too big it adds to the footprint i want this to be a pocketable simple carry it with me just like i'm doing right now even though i am cropped in i'm walking with a steady shot and i'm not making any attempt to keep this camera steady. I'm just walking, hand holding it. This is a pretty darn good camera. Like I said earlier, R5 and R6 from Canon and the A7S III are getting all the, all the hype. But in all honesty, if you just have a YouTube channel and you make vlogs, you're a travel vlogger, you're a beauty vlogger, you're an at-home vlogger, a family vlogger, you, anything. This is all you need. Like, you don't need an A7S III. You don't need 10-bit. You don't need all that stuff. You do professional camera work and you use your camera to make money besides just a youtube channel then you might need some of those cameras if you just make youtube videos like this and you walk around your neighborhood getting eaten by bugs this is all you need this is all you need for that as always thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one
Bye.